Hi, welcome to Game Changer. I'm your co-host, Kurt Pickering, and my co-host here, Michelle Harris. Our guest today is Joe Pasternak. He is the head coach at UC Santa Barbara. Joe, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and you know what, what influenced you to fall in love with the game. Well, I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana and always loved the game of basketball. Uh, my size, didn't think I would ever be an NBA player, so I wanted to be a college basketball coach. And that was my lifelong dream. Went to Indiana University to learn under Bobby Knight as a student assistant for four years. And it was just an amazing, amazing uh, experience. You know, I say it was the best three credit class I took at Indiana University. <laughs> But that really gave me my background on learning the game of basketball. Wow. Can I ask you a question, Joe? What player influenced you when you were youth, in your youth? Growing up in New Orleans, I was an LSU basketball fan. Mm -hmm. And a guy by the name of Chris Jackson, he changed his name to Mahmoud abdul Rauf. And one game, when I was young, I think I was in the sixth grade, he had his SEC debut against Florida, and he scored 53 points. And it was unbelievable. And from that point on, I just always watched him. And I don't know if I've seen a player since then able to score at such ease that Chris Jackson did. So that ignited some passion in you. Absolutely. How old is he? Because he's still playing the game. You know, I don't know his age, but he's probably uh, 50. Wow. Yeah, he's playing in the three-on-three -three league, right. the, the big three, I think they call it. And I, I know he spent some time in China. You know, he made some good money after his NBA days. Right, right. But he was just such a fascinating player to watch. Well, you mentioned IU, and if you talk about IU basketball, you got to talk about Bobby Knight. Tell us a story or two or three about Coach Knight. You know, every day was such an amazing experience for me at Indiana. I had note cards, and I would take notes on every day in practice what he taught. And um, he's just such an amazing elite teacher, master teacher. Mm -hmm. And it was such an amazing experience every single day, uh, learning how to prepare for a game, mm -hmm. how to watch video, how to prepare your team on the court, but also in the video room, how to build an offense. Uh, his teaching part whole method teaching was so amazing. And, you know, philosophically, just understanding how he motivated each player uh, differently was just such an amazing, amazing experience for me. Who were some of the players? You were there 95 to 99? Yes. Who were some of the players there? Uh, Luke Recker, A.J. Guyton, uh, Andre Patterson, uh, Jason Collier, guys like that. Yeah, yeah. So what, what did you take from, I know you've broke down what, you, uh, what he, how he taught the game. What's the most important thing you learned from those four years there? You know, I think just how to be successful in life. Um, discipline, loyalty, a work ethic, uh, th that's ingrained. It's the culture mm -hmm. of Coach Knight's system. And whether you're the manager, the trainer, the assistant coach, or any of the players, I think if you leave that program after four years, those are the three qualities you learn on how to be successful in life. And I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so you got some leadership skills from that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about him as one of the greatest leaders of all time, yeah. you know, I think he definitely embodies all of those characteristics. Mm -hmm. There's another guy that's, that's uh, significant in basketball today from IU, Mark Cuban. Yes. <laughs> no, Mark Cuban, uh, I think he went to IU and he invented a uh, TV that, you can watch yeah. games on it. Yeah, HD. HD. Well, the story goes, he was so uh, addicted to IU basketball, he moved to Dallas. He was a bartender, 
and he wanted to keep up on the games, and so he went to uh, Radio Shack, bought all these different components, and he was able to get the radio broadcast from uh, Bloomington down to Dallas. Right. He created that business and sold it for over $2 billion. Amazing. So that's an IU grad there. Yeah. Uh, then you moved on from IU to uh, Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your experience there. Very fortunate. Ben Braun hired me at the age of 22. It was my first job um, moving from Bloomington to Berkeley. It's, it's quite a different uh, oh, yeah. place, but uh, I was very fortunate. Ben Braun gave me a lot of responsibility at a young age and um, promoted me at 24, two years later, to be an assistant coach in the Pac-12. Uh, recruiting in the Pac-12 at that age was amazing experience to learn how to recruit the state of California, building relationships. I was very fortunate to have that opportunity at such a young age. And how about some of the player names there? Um, coached and recruited Leon Poe, who mm -hmm. then played for the Boston Celtics, sure. Ryan Anderson, who's on the Houston Rockets, yeah. um, Jamal Sampson. We had some really good players at the time, even Shante Leggins, who um, is now the head coach yeah. of Eastern Washington from Dos Pueblos here. Wow. All right. Well, how exciting your journey has been so far. Can I ask you a personal question about um, how you were affected by Hurricane Katrina? Well, um, my parents lost their house in Katrina. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a house in New Orleans and um, it flooded, so they had to move from that house. And then I took over the head coaching job after Cal mm -hmm. at University of New Orleans one year later after Katrina. Mm -hmm. I got the job, I was the youngest coach in America at 30 years old. And the reason for that is nobody else wanted to move to New Orleans <laughs> <laughs> because of Katrina. But uh, I took the job to go back home, and it was a great experience for me to learn how to deal with all that adversity. Sure. Um, you know, unfortunately, they couldn't stay Division One. The president decided they were going to transition out of Division One and go Division Three um, because of the lack of students and ability mm -hmm. to support financially Division One. So. Um, you know, I dealt with Katrina in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it sounds like you're a real overcomer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that was Division One at the time. Yeah. And then they, they moved to mm -hmm. Division Three. Mm -hmm. So then your next stop was Arizona. Yeah. That had to be a the day you got got that call. Tell us about that. You know, I was really excited. I didn't know Sean Miller uh, before. Uh, I got to Arizona, but just mutual friends uh, got us in touch, and it was just an amazing experience uh, learning from him and how he teaches the game, mm -hmm. learning how to develop and lead a comprehensive program. Yeah. And, you know, from offense to defense to how he recruits to how he develops players, yeah. he's just an incredible teacher, mm -hmm. and he's developed so many head coaches. His brother Archie, I took his spot. He's now the coach at Indiana. He was at Dayton. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Mack was the coach at Xavier. He's now at Louisville. And James Whitford's now at Ball State. So, um, you know, his system works. It works at all different levels. And uh, I was just so fortunate to learn his style of play, his system of play, and how he does things. Mm -hmm. How about a little name dropping on players? I mean, it's a long list. Yeah. You know, we had Aaron Gordon, Stanley Johnson. Mm -hmm. Stanley Johnson actually lives here in Santa Barbara in the summertime, goes to P3. A lot of these guys, Aaron Gordon goes to P3. Um, but we had Lowry Marketing, he was a first team all rookie team this year. So we had a ton of players. TJ McConnell started a point guard for the Philadelphia 76ers, Solomon Hill. Yeah. So. List goes on and on. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the pack, Pac 10, so. Do they call it 10 or 12 now? 12 now. Pac-12, yeah. yeah. It's a pretty competitive conference, right? Yeah, it's amazing. UCLA, I mean, Arizona State now is very good. Stanford, mm -hmm. Cal, USC, it's, it's a really tough league. Wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, then you, in March 2017, you uh, accepted a position right here in our paradise. Tell us about that. It is paradise. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I read Twitter, and when I got the job, someone tweeted out, Joe Pasternak won the lottery of who gets to live in Santa Barbara. <laughs> and I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, this is such an amazing place. It is paradise for me and my family. We love it here. 
and I was just very fortunate to get this job. Well, and it spells stability because you're the third coach in 34 years, so that says a lot about uh, the program, that uh, the sustainability, and coaches don't want to leave. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, no, I mean, what Coach Pem did and Coach Williams, it's amazing the amount of uh, years they each were head coaches mm -hmm. here. Uh, that doesn't happen in many places, and you know that's. You know, to their credit, the success they've had, and probably also to Santa Barbara's uh, credit of how beautiful it is. Nobody wants to leave. Yeah. Yes, paradise it is. So in 2017-18, you, you uh, had a record of 23 and nine, and that tied the NC2A record for the best improvement. Is that right? In yeah, minutes? biggest turnaround in NCA history. Yeah. Wow. And what do you what do you give tribute to that? You know, we were fortunate when we took over that um, we had a couple guys that were ineligible the year before that became eligible. We also had um, two graduate transfers that we signed late. Our starting point guard, Marcus Jackson, starting forward, Leland King. Leland mm -hmm. King became an all-conference player, first team all-league, led the conference in rebounding. He was terrific. And then Max Heidegger was a freshman the year before, became a sophomore, and he ended up breaking the record. Uh, most threes in the history of the school, averaged 19 a game. So, you know, credit to the players. Gabe Vincent uh, was coming off an ACL injury the year before, and he was healthy this year. So we were very fortunate that uh, kind of lightning in a bottle, everything came together. And with, with the graduate players, what do you get? What, what's kind of special when you get a player? Even though it's a, a one-year uh, experience, yeah. what do you get from You know, what they have is experience and age you know I think mm -hmm. as a coach you want to get old and stay old mm -hmm. and um, the experience they have mm -hmm. um, they've gone through college so long that this is it for them yeah. they're very self-motivated it's yeah. the last chance they have and that's really helped yeah. can I ask a question on what are your thoughts on the one and done rule in college in um, college basketball you know I think it definitely needs to go mm -hmm. um, I think when you look at the best players in college, but in the NBA. And hey, Joe, maybe explain to the viewers yeah. what yeah, the maybe. one and done is. NBA players, you have to go to college for one year before you can go to the NBA. And mm -hmm. you know, I always refer to it as, well, who are the best players maybe in the history of the NBA? Mm -hmm. LeBron James didn't go to college. Kevin Garnett didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are just two right there. Mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant didn't go to college. <laughs> So three of the best players in the history of the game didn't go to college. So um, to make these guys go to college, they don't want to be there. They don't care about the academics. When school ends, when their basketball season ends in March, they don't want to finish school. Mm -hmm. So they're just there biding their time. And, um, you know, I think uh, for a select few that can go straight to the NBA, that's what's best for them. I, th I think it's in the next uh, two, three years, I think we're probably going to see a change. Yeah. Do you agree? Or no, just... absolutely. I think it'll happen in the next two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can the Santa Barbara community help you and your program? That's a great question. I think coming out to support us, if everyone would come to our games, that mm -hmm. would be a big, big deal for us. Yeah. Um, you know, we got a lot of community support last year. Mm -hmm. Our last game was sold out. It was an yeah. amazing environment, and we're trying mm -hmm. to bring a, stand, a style of basketball that everybody can be excited about going to. You don't have to drive two hours to see a Clipper or a Laker game or UCLA. You can just stay right here in mm -hmm. paradise and come see UC Santa Barbara. I'll tell you a little secret. When I moved here in 1989, Jerry Pym was the coach and UNLV was in the, the league at the time. And it, it was a frenzy, you know, at the Thunderdome. And up at the at the very top was this, I don't know if it's called the Thunder Meter. Yeah, Thunder Meter. But people went crazy on that, mm -hmm. you know? And that's been sitting with cobwebs right. for many years. I don't know if that would uh, <laughs> bring more fans out, but it, it, it really had an amazing effect. Yeah, we're excited. You know, we just uh, raised the money for a 54-foot video board that will mm -hmm. be installed. And... I think that's going to really help with the ambiance of the games and mm -hmm. the game experience. But we're starting to get an incredible amount of following, and it's going to be an exciting year this coming year up. So you lost four starters that were seniors. You lost six seniors total 
Is the cupboard bare or are you just reloading? You know, we've reloaded. <laughs> it's just the unknown. Really don't know kind of what to mm -hmm. expect. Um, but we have some really good players coming in. Mm -hmm. Really excited. Um, we have a young man, Deverell Ramsey, uh, who signed with us last spring. He sat out. He'll be our point guard. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an incredible ball of energy, a jet on the floor. We're really excited about him. Max Heidegger is back. So uh, he's maybe the preseason player of the year in the uh, Big West. And then we have Ja'Cory McLaughlin from Oregon State, started in the Pac-12, averaged 10 and a half a game. He'll be eligible to play this year. Mm -hmm. And a graduate transfer, Armand Davis from Alabama, uh, who can play right away. So we have some really exciting talent coming in. Um, and we just hopefully the pieces will fit together like they did this past year. And tell us a little bit about your schedule. Our schedule is still uh, being uh, finished. The contract's being signed, but... Uh, we think we're going to play Washington at Washington. That's a Pac-12 game we're excited about. And, um, but we're still really working on the details of the whole schedule right now. Okay. And the conference, do you think it will be uh, the Big West much stronger, about the same? You know, I think the Big West will be much stronger this year. Um, there were a lot of young teams, a lot of, a lot of players back. And um, the Big West is a great league as far as coaches, really, really talented coaches, mm -hmm. great coaches. And um, the players are very talented as well. I was very surprised by that in my mm -hmm. first year. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the history of the Gauchos, when you recruit, what, what, what comes into play? What do you try to sell them on? Well, there's so many things. I think, first off, uh, the beauty of Santa Barbara, um, you know, being able to wake up every day and have an ocean surrounding your university is amazing. Um, the number eight public university academically in America. Um, parents, you know, really, really love that part of it. And, you know, you can't play basketball forever, we tell them. Yeah. You know, this isn't a four-year decision, it's a 50-year decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, having a degree from our university, you're set for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, but also we have a lot of other uh, basketball, uh, you know, thing pieces that I feel are really big. Having P3 in our backyard with all the NBA players, mm -hmm. our players actually utilize P3. That's a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Having that along with... Um, our schedule being able to play uh, big non-conference teams, mm -hmm. that's big. And, um, you know, the Thunderdome, it's a great, great arena, and it's had so much history and tradition. But, you know, we have so much to sell at UC Santa Barbara, and that's, you know, for me, a big reason why I chose to come here, and I'm fortunate to have gotten the yes. job. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you're living your dream right now? Absolutely, every day. I, when, you know, I, I read in a book one day, uh, Harvey McKay mm -hmm. uh, wrote this, when you, there's no difference between your job and your profession, mm -hmm. you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And I love what I do. I don't feel like I'm ever working. Yeah. If you could say, um, what would be three qualities um, that you have that drove you to where you are today, living your dream? You know, that's a great question. I tell my son all the time, mm -hmm. uh, he's 11 years old, mm -hmm. uh, the qualities that to be successful. I, I would say you need an incredible motor, mm -hmm. relentless motor, mm -hmm. and be able to persevere and persist through any type of adversity. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. self-discipline, self-motivated, but th those would be the qualities I feel like mm -hmm. that you really need to be successful. This is on my mind, so I got to talk about it because you're from New Orleans. Your favorite player, Chris Jackson, mine, Pistol Pete Maravich. So tell me what, you know, what back there in the, the Big Easy, yeah. you know, tell me what you, what you know about the old days of New Orleans jazz and Pistol Pete. That was way before my time, <laughs> but um, Gosh, Pistol Pete, you know, he's probably one of the greatest point guards ever. Uh, his passing, his ball handling drills are still today, he, you know, kids today are still using his, all his drills and what he did and what an incredible career he had. Well, I would just say there's a, there's a connection, New Orleans to Santa Barbara, because the owner of the Jazz uh, was Sam Battistone. Okay. And they started the Sambo's Restaurants. Okay. And so Sam was the owner. He hired Bill Burka, the longtime yeah. Laker guru, uh, 
as his general manager, Elgin Baylor was the head coach. They made the trade for Pistol Pete from right. the Hawks. And uh, unfortunately, the team did move on to Utah. Right. But uh, yeah, that's Santa Barbara has a connection with, with the New Orleans Jazz and the Pistol. Wow. So uh, tell us a little bit about your family. My wife, uh, Lindsay, I met her when I was at Cal. Mm -hmm. um, her brother is Roxy Bernstein, who's on ESPN College Basketball, Pac-12 Network. So she comes from a sports family, which is great. Mm -hmm. She understands. <laughs> um, and then uh, I have a daughter, Lily, who's seven years old, and son, Joe, who's 11. And my son's obsessed with basketball. He comes to all the games as the ball boy. and. Um, my daughter Lily uh, is seven. She loves gymnastics. She doesn't know if we've won or lost a game, so it's nice. She's the only one that doesn't know if we've won or lost. She hugs me no matter what yeah. after the game. <laughs> how how has the game changed? It's from you know you're 41 years old. Yeah. How how has this game changed? And maybe let's let's uh, differentiate college and pro. Yeah. You know, from a college standpoint. Uh, when I was 22 years old, 19 years ago at Indiana University with Bobby mm -hmm. Knight, mm -hmm. there were very few ball screens being utilized, pick and rolls, in mm -hmm. college. And I would say that would be the biggest difference in college basketball today. Mm -hmm. It's turned into a pick and roll game yeah. from the NBA. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing if you watched film or video of uh, games back in 99, 1999 mm -hmm. to now, you'd see much more off ball screening and now it's just strictly the pick and roll ball screens. Yeah. And what separates the great players from the good and the average? And we can talk at the high school level, college. Yeah. You know, being able to coach at Arizona and coach these NBA lottery picks, I coached mm -hmm. four, they all have one thing in common, they love the game. They're in the gym relentlessly you have to pull them out of the gym I, I remember we had a young man Aaron Gordon he was a number four pick in the NBA draft mm -hmm. and he was a freshman and we were getting ready to play San Diego State and coach Miller called me after practice He's like Aaron just doesn't look fresh what's going on mm -hmm. so I brought Aaron into my office and I said you know we practice you know three days a week then we have a day off and like you should be well rested what do you do at nighttime are you not going to bed are you up all night partying mm -hmm. or what, what's up he right. goes no, I coach every night. I'm just I'm working out. And he put I put a sled on my back, and I'm I have uh, my friend hold it while I dribble and and you know it, Lowry Markinen was the same way. Um, the lottery pick of the Chicago Bulls all rookie team. Mm -hmm. You know he's in the gym all night long after practice, yeah. and these guys just love the game yeah. and are in there constantly getting better. Determined. Uh, determined. And I would say, you know, that, that would be separating the good from the great. Besides yourself, who would you say are five of the top coaches at the college level right now and what's unique about them? You know, I think uh, Sean Miller, just because I know him so well and I've worked with him, you know, he's the complete package. Uh, his winning percentage is unbelievable. Uh, what he did at Arizona, he took over, they had no players, and you know, he, he just has built Arizona back to being a top 10 program in the country. Uh, I'd say Bill Self. Yeah. I think Bill Self from Kansas is definitely a top five coach in the country. He's the total package, just like Sean Miller, recruiter, def great defensive coach, great offensive coach. What he's done as far as Big 12 titles is unprecedented. It'll never mm -hmm. happen again. Um, so I think he's got to be up there in the top, you know, two. Um, obviously, Coach K, what he does year in, year out, what he's done over 25, 30 years is incredible. And, you know, he's changed with the times. He's now getting all the one and dones um, and proven he can win with those and mm -hmm. all the national championships. Um, so, you know, I think those three are, are some of the best in the country. And then I think if you go to the East Coast, Jim Beheim, you know, yeah. year in and year out, you can say what you want, but gosh, it's amazing um, what he's done with the 2-3 zone. And he's copied all across the country, whether it's high school or college. You know, I think he'll go down in history as 
creating the best two three zone in the history of the game. So mm -hmm. I think you'd have to say Jim Beheim and then you know Jay Wright. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah. He's won uh, multiple national championships over the past five years, mm -hmm. and um, you know what he's done in Villanova is incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw three of your games this past year, and the, the first thing that stood out, and I can honestly say from start to finish, was energy. Mm -hmm. your, your team brought so much energy. Of course, they were following their, their mentor because mm -hmm. you were up and down that sideline too. <laughs> and I loved seeing that, you know. But tell us your philosophy, and I want to add this, and I've been around this game a while. I, I remember Al McGuire, they asked him what success is, and he said, well, of course winning, but he said success is when you get your fans to get off their seats and, you know, just cheering Cheer. and, yeah, and el elation. Uh, and that's the energy I saw your, your team bring this past year. But tell us a little bit about your philosophy. You know, I can't be Bobby Knight or Sean Miller. Mm -hmm. I can only be myself. And I, you know, I really believe a team reflects the personality of the head coach. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's who I am. You know, I'm just nonstop energy. And um, hopefully my team will take that on because um, if you can play with unbelievable passion, I think then it gives you a chance. It hides some weaknesses of your team. And, um, you know, I thought our guys did a really good job of that this year. All right. Michelle, you're the life coach. You want to ask any uh, questions? Here? Well, I've been trying to throw a few in. <laughs> well, you know, it's just been so um, exciting and a pleasure just to get to know you and learn myself more about basketball, but your passion exudes. Just you telling your story and how you ended up here in your dream life mm -hmm. with your determination and your tenacity is a great influence and can inspire this community, our community of Santa Barbara, to get these people out there supporting your team and your program. It's exciting to have you here, and we're so thankful that you came. Thank you mm -hmm. for having me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll be running this show uh, often. So when is the season opener, or roughly? I know you're still Middle finalizing. Middle of November. Middle of November. Mm -hmm. So when are you allowed to start practices? What does NC2A allow? You know, um, the NCA has changed the rules. We get mm -hmm. four hours a week in the summertime with our players now. So mm -hmm. um, next week we'll start practice. Really excited about that. We're taking our team on a tour of Vancouver, Canada. Mm -hmm. nice. August 21st to the 25th, we're uh, going to be playing a few games in, in Vancouver. But what it really does is give our, our team a chance to build chemistry yeah. and practice and really get the new guys um, learning our system. Yeah. I hear the fourth quarter buzzing go yes. off. Thanks for joining us. Joe, thank you for being on our show today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming.